We're here with Alia Green, our mate across the ditch from the Aussie Women's Sevens team. Sis, can you please tell us um, a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, where you're currently living, and yeah, just a bit of background about Alia Green. <laughs> <laughs> That's your talk? It's Angel? <laughs> yeah, so around the attractions. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Elia. Um, I was born in Fiji, raised in Fiji till um, I was about four, five, four years old. And then um, my parents brought us over to um, Australia. So that's kind of where um, it all started. Um, now I'm living in um, Lane Cove, which is like North Sydney area. And um, yeah, we tra we're based in um, Moore Park, which is kind of close to the city um, in New South Wales, Sydney. So um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm located, where I came from. Yeah, we, we want to know about your upbringing and a little bit about your athletics background. Mm. <laughs> Tell us more. How do you get so fast? It all yeah, how you <laughs> <laughs> well, it all started um, learning how to run run away fast enough from my mum, you know, from the hidings. <laughs> so it always started. There's no secret about it. <laughs> yeah, but um, basically I found my love for running um, when I was about five years old when I did my first ever athletics carnival. Oh, and, um, you know, I had this this massive afro. Um, I was one of the only um, black kids in the school. My brother and I, we were in a very, um, like, uh, what can I say, Caucasian <laughs> white school. <laughs> and, um, yeah, look, it wasn't easy, I'll be honest. Yeah. I got bullied yeah. a lot. And um, I got bullied a lot. And I think, um, I guess, one way for me to make friends or, you know, kind of find my feet was to <sighs> to do sport. And I, I, um, I figured out, like, that I was I was pretty good at running. running. So um, at my first athletics carnival, my mum came to watch and um, all I wanted to do was make her proud and impress her, really. Okay, so you're fast. <laughs> we know you're fast. Um, you're also pretty strong. Now, we've both seen your video the other week of you benching 105 kgs. That was crazy. Come on. What's the secret? That's hashtag goals. <laughs> this is what, like, when you're in rehab, you don't really have many choices. <laughs> when you have one foot, you have to make do with other body parts. How awkward. I'm always in rehab and I don't bench that. <laughs> <laughs> On the wrong program. <laughs> I guess one thing I've definitely learned in my career um, playing professional rugby sevens is that, like, injury has taught me a lot. And anyone that's watching this or, um, you know, you really should use any kind of setback as an opportunity to get better at other things. And that's something that I've used rehab as, you know, even though, you know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't get um, have like depressed in the first few weeks and mm. even throughout the process especially with my knee rehab and my shoulder mm. rehab I guess my um, getting back getting my foot back um, to its full strength mm. was just an opportunity to better I guess my mental health and also my upper body strength and one of the goals was to um, bench over 100 because I hadn't done that in a really long time um, probably <laughs> like five years that um, I hadn't I hadn't done it, but even when I did do over 100, um, it was with, with like a powerlifting technique, um, which is it's not strict. So that's why this time I wanted it to be like a stricter, um, strict um, bench press over 100. So it was definitely a, an, an achievement for me in my rehab. So. That's, that's so cool. I know like you're like me, you've gone through a few injuries mm. and um, I guess one that stands out for me was at the previous to the Commonwealth Games I remember ah. was that when you did your show your no it was your knee, oh, knee, knee, knee. your knee yeah. um, and I remember actually talking to you after the final and your your because I, I remember watching you run you're still like 20 million times faster than anyone else <laughs> but obviously like I could tell that you were still carrying a little bit of a niggle um, what what goes through your head when you go out to play on the field, but knowing you're not 100, percent but you still want to, you still want to give it all you all you've got and what you can, you know. Because a lot of people, I guess, don't realise how many players actually play through niggles and injuries. And what's that kind of mindset for you? What pushes you to to keep going? To be honest, I think it's actually my mum. 
no, I think it is my mum. Yeah. Yeah. She, um, she, bless her, she passed away two years ago now, and I, she um, was the strongest woman I knew. No, I know the bravest woman, and um, I think I think of her every time I'm in pain, or um, whether that be mentally or physically. And I think if she can um, be strong for me in so many different um, situations, then I can be strong for her and and um, stick it out whatever pain it is I'm I'm facing until I actually can't run on the field you know what I mean yeah. so I think of her every time that's why I always have her name written on my strapping tape um but yeah she's always in the back of my mind every time I step on the field even every time I wake up in the morning go to sleep she's um the love of my life so I, yeah everything I do I do for her she's like that's honestly inspiring I think I got a little bit of guess about anyway before I start tearing up let's move on <laughs> um hey 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 let's, let's look at all emotional here <laughs> That, that's so cool to hear, Susan. Thanks for sharing. Um, in terms of lockdown, you know, it's changed a lot of our plans this year. Um, how have you been coping? What what some of the, I guess, challenges you've been facing throughout all of this, and and what do you actually love about it? What what have you taken away from being in lockdown? Um, well, it's definitely slowed down the world. That's for sure, mm-hmm. and slowed down yeah my life which was has been um i think it's been a really good thing like first of all i got injured at the beginning in sydney sevens as you guys might know so like that was going to be a setback for me so having this time to recover it hasn't really changed my training patterns because rehab still had to train so um i haven't been limited in that i've still been able to go to work and um you know being medical rehab i was able to use the training facilities so it's actually just given me time to work on that and um you know, just to do things that I love at home, mm. like um, knitting. No, I'm joking. <laughs> oh, like, <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know how it is. Like, yeah. obviously, you guys know our, tra- our training is pretty damn physical and very mm. demanding, stressful, mm. all those things. So just to take a step back and appreciate the smaller things, the finer things, and um, to be at home um, with my, my love, my dog, it's been pretty special. Cool. What are some of your hobbies? Yeah. Outside of rugby. Yeah, outside of rugby. <laughs> well, I do I play, I play a bit of guitar. Yeah. You a bit of guitar? Um, okay. My hobbies are, I, I love my plants. See those plants in the background? Yes, I just noticed. I yeah. like how you've set up just yeah. to throw them off very yeah. quickly. Brilliant. Yeah, well, you know how it's 10 minutes later, I was placing all of my yeah. uh, <laughs> Oh, it's gold. Love it, love it. Yeah, Um, yeah, I play guitar. I actually, um, I've written a few songs. I like writing music. Can we have a, you got your guitar there? I actually have a terrible voice, but I write the music for my friend because I have like a a lot of friends that can, I say a lot, My two of my best mates sing. So I usually write songs and like we try to, you know, you know how it is. Oh, and I've also been DJing. Yes. Oh, oh we got a, we got some DJs, DJs over here too. <laughs> Jeepers. <laughs> oh, I know. And Renee, I know oh, Renee oh, is yeah. quite the DJ. Oh, right. I might have to do a collaboration. <laughs> well, my my DJ name is DJ Storm, so yeah. just remember it. DJ Storm. <laughs> there you go, people watching. This is yeah. DJ Storm. Keep an eye out. Yeah. So I guess I just touched base on post rugby. What what are your dreams and aspirations um, once you do settle down and finish playing rugby? So um, one of my goals post rugby is to work for the UN, United Nations. Um, I've been doing a bit of work with them for the past two or three years um, with UN Women. But um, I guess uh, since I was about 17, 18, I wanted to work for the UN as a nurse um, or as a peacekeeper. So I did nursing after high school and um, before I was playing rugby. And, um, I guess, yeah, my passion lies in in that kind of category. Yeah. Uh, maybe not, I don't know if I'll continue nursing again, but definitely working with the UN is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Um, so, yeah. Doctor, all around over here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So you Sweet. Um, what, what what do you two want to do? I'm interested to know. Mate, this is your interview. You <laughs> oh, I want to hear about you two. Oh, well. actually, you want to tell me about your new uh, thing that you're doing next? Next. Oh, okay. <laughs> you guys just interviewed me. 
<laughs> now nah, I've just um, kind of looked in while I'm just signing up to do a youth worker course. So I'm real passionate about um, that is awesome. and helping them and just in whatever yeah. areas I can. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So just along those lines. Thanks, Lisa. So <laughs> I like you. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> Yeah. No, congratulations. That's awesome. That's very exciting. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, do you want to share with us, do you have any stories or um, want to share with us anything about your Pacific heritage at all that people might not know about or that's pretty cool for you? Um, yeah, okay. Well, my last name in Fijian is Drokendroka and it's Ooh. tattooed. I have it on my side here. Oh, oh my wow. Goodness. I didn't actually drew that, you know. Um, and so um, because my ma- my parents obviously adopted us in Fiji, um, she was kind of like the, you know, my mum's Balangi, obviously very white, very white walking around in Fiji and they um, they just loved her. Like she was like a local. My mum even spoke Fijian. Oh, my mum's Polish, crazy. mind you. And, <laughs> My mum learnt the language and um, wow. and she'd be walking around and all the locals would be saying, uh, Bula, Mrs. Drokendroka. <laughs> so that's that's oh. kind of like very special to me because like mm-hmm. shows that, um, you know, I don't have a Fijian last name at all being green, but um, <laughs> they used to call my mum Mrs. Drokendroka over there as well. So I do um, really do love both of my, having both cultures mm-hmm. um, being Fijian and also um, representing Australian, but then I also have the Polish heritage. Mm. My dad's from half English as well, so pretty much United Nations in my family. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> awesome. that's so cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool, sis. Um, okay, I just want to ask, what made you choose rugby, and how old were you when you first started playing? Yeah. Um. So basically, it was really um just lucky by chance my um my cousin who's not really my cousin but you know when you um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so one of my cousins in Melbourne um she said that she was trying out for the talent ID day um oh. for rugby sevens so they were holding them all around Australia and she mm-hmm. said um Elia you should really you should really give it a shot because you like you're so quick it'd be it'd be um you'd be really good at sevens mm-hmm. and uh, I hadn't played it ever before hadn't really watched it I just didn't really have um, any faith in myself in doing the sport. So I said, you know what, you go, good luck, and I hope you go well. And then the only reason why, like, we went together is because um, I didn't have boots, didn't know what I was doing. Um, anyway, so then the only thing I did know what we were doing is that they were doing the um, jump test and a sprint test they're doing like a 40 meter sprint and then that's probably the only thing that I felt the slightest bit comfortable doing and then pretty much from that they they um asked me to go to the next round and that was in 2012 so never looked back since years in the game eight years fast forward one of the best bloody players in the world I reckon (laughs) you two can't bloody talk (laughs) now this is useless (laughs) now that we're into rugby mode yeah what is uh, your favorite tourney on the World Series? Um, I'd have to say Dubai, traditionally. <laughs> you know, every single person <laughs> said Dubai. That's pretty much it. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep clear. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Why? Not that, however, Cape Town was definitely a close. And that's always the next one, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys know Dubai, the atmosphere in Dubai, the, the hotels, mm. the. Um, the food, just everything in Dubai, you can't really top that. They just totally you know, agree. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Yeah. Um, and so that's your favourite tournament, but what is your most memorable moment? You've been playing for eight years now. Surely there's one moment that you will never forget. Hmm. In Dubai, I actually delivered to the door um, some tickets to come see um, our games um, to 50 Cent because he was – remember when he was staying in our hotel? <laughs> Did you see him? Yeah, so I I said like you, you gotta come you gotta come to our games and then I wrote him a song. Do you mean you know um if you go onto my Instagram anyone watching <laughs> I made him a song to Twenty One Questions. Oh, 50. I heard you in a hotel. I wanna come and meet you. I promise I won't tell. And I was like, Yo, 50, I know you're in a hotel. And then basically it talks about 
I've been stalking him. Like I looked at his Instagram everywhere he'd been. Like I knew that he rode a camel that day. So I could, <laughs> and then like I knew he was performing the next night. So I wrote him a song, put on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then I delivered the tickets to his door. But did he answer the door? No. But I left the tickets there. Yes. Oh my gosh, wow. What a cool story. Yes. <laughs> Okay, I think you're winning in yeah, the you memories. Are. You definitely <laughs> memories. And they're not even rugby, like, no. how good. So <laughs> there's some great things that come out of traveling the world, isn't there, sis? Yeah. Last question with rugby. Um, who is the best player you've ever come up against and why? Uh, this is a pretty easy one. Portia would win. She <laughs> <laughs> is an incredible athlete, incredible athlete. The way that she... Um, so everything about it, I think I since I think since because the very beginning of my career, she um was just so consistent and so she is so consistent and she's just um she's just a very unique athlete. Yeah. And the way that she her footwork, her fan, the way that she can um go from a complete stop to her takeoff is incredible. And like I know she's been facing a lot of injuries as a lot of us, but mm-hmm. yeah, and myself as well. I just admire the way that she um, trains, um, mm-hmm. goes through her rehab and the way that she inspires so many of our youth and mm-hmm. girls wanting to play the game, our game. So, um, yeah, she's cool. she's a role model to many and even yeah. even to me when I see how she's played over her career. Oh, and, cool. yeah, she- <laughs> Sorry, I have one more question. <laughs> when Elia Green gets the ball on the field <laughs> and it's wide open space <laughs> with one defender on her, one in front of her, <laughs> What goes through her mind? Is it I've got to get around her, step her, beat her speed, or is it run over the straight, run there. straight over the top of her? <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, I've got both of them. <laughs> but all good. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know next time we have that thing. That's just a thing. That's <laughs> hilarious. He lifted her up and uh shut <laughs> up. He lifted her up and ducked her on the floor. <laughs> Do you want to know what's a funny story? Look, there's been many situations where it has been you and I. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I have, you know, that one time and I ran like 60 meters and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna make it to the line. Like, it never happened. And then all I heard was, heard was this. <laughs> like, I was like, oh how am I? And I look and I see those. I was like. Oh, anyway, no. I know I know what you're talking about, but do you notice it was more of a cuddle? It, a cuddle. it was definitely a cuddle. It was like, girl, where are you going? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna take the, t- the tackle and I'm gonna murder. Nick, murder. I'm it was a bear hug. It was definitely a bear hug. <laughs> so let's not, oh, let's, not, so let's not get that wrong, okay? It was, I got really so much bad. shit from my family after that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> they were like. Yeah. You nearly scored, eh? <laughs> I was just like, oh, and my brothers, nah, just send me the the shot of it. That's all they did. the video clip of it. I was like, mean love. Yeah. <laughs> shot, shot so man. good. So okay. Good. Now um, we're moving on to <laughs> my favorite part of the interview. This is the fun part. Yeah. <laughs> We've got seven questions. And they're all about your teammates. Uh-oh. <laughs> you're, you're throwing me under a bus. Aren't you? <laughs> no, no, you're throwing them under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> we've had some pretty good answers from the other team, and we've learnt a lot. So don't be shy. You know, it's, it's all good. We all we all family oh, and friends here. It's going to be hard. I am very shy, as you know. <laughs> um, question number one: <laughs> Who in the team takes the longest to get ready? Like you're talking about before a tournament, or and I'm getting too too. In general, general. just in general, general. like who are you always waiting for? Like, come on, you need to go. All right, well, me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, obviously, I'm like everyone knows that. Like, where where's Elia? Good question. Okay, you won that one. You can cut the CC out. That's me. I'll take the cake. Okay. All right. Uh, next one. Who's the best roomie and why? Um. Look, probably me because uh, I, I always have food. I always have snacks. I'm out. 
I, you will never go hungry because <laughs> you've got, got food, snacks, and um, yeah, I don't know. You know, I'll I'll make you giggle. You know, I'll make it. Laugh. You're the best, but then who's the worst? Who has the worst habits? Who like you know snores or I don't know just or annoys you like sleeps <laughs> Maybe, um, I know, I love Shannon Parry, but she's really, like, on time for everything. It doesn't really go with my schedule. Oh, everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, 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 I, I, I do the best impersonation of her. Yeah. And it kind of stresses me out because yeah. she'll be like, mate, come on, mate, we've got to go now. The meeting starts in 15 minutes, mate. Come on, chop, chop, get your bag. Like, have you got your diary? Have you got a pen? Have you got, oh, you know, wow. Making me a list, I'm like Shannon, like I've got everything ready. Like, why have we got to go 15 minutes early? Like, I think we've, got, we've got time. We've got time. Mate, five minutes. Uh, five minutes. What did you say? Like, if you're five, if you're not five minutes early, you're late or something. Like yeah, that. I agree. Oh, we can oh. be friends, Shannon. <laughs> I got you. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I can sleep an extra five minutes. That's not that far. <laughs> <laughs> so she's definitely the best roomie for me being on time but um in terms of my my stress levels and getting on time <laughs> who's the old when you turn up to the cafe and it's time to pay for a feed or a coffee and they're like ah oh, oh, yeah. oh, you got me you got me <laughs> Next time, I've got you. Oh, they have to be. Um... Who's the old mate and he does that? <laughs> Or maybe Soraya. Soraya. Oh, is like, 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 oh, yeah. I've been at Kiwi Club. Yeah, yeah, where she, she sniffs my breakfast out every morning. She'll be like coming over. Like, I'll be even eating like like a mandarin and she'll be like, oh, that looks juicy as eh? yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's like, that looks juicy as. Um, or like my porridge. She'll be like, oh, what have you got in there today? <laughs> No, you want to try it. <laughs> I don't want to try it. So maybe, um, yeah, maybe my little sister. Oh, oh cute. That's so cute. Um, number five, who, I know this is going to be probably hard for you to choose, but who's the most competitive, like, mm. 100, 100 person all the time? Me. Who the best, you know, yourself? I'd say maybe, do you know um, Samantha Traherne, Sammy yeah. Traherne? Mm-hmm. She is extremely competitive and like she was she's the type of player that like if you if you challenge her at something, she will come back at you like twenty times harder because she'll prove to you that she is um, you know, she's good for, good for the job. So I, I admire the way that she is, especially um in contact and on the field, um, how competitive she can get and how she is, yeah. Uh next one. <laughs> oh, who's the coach's pit? <laughs> ah I'd have to say Dominique Detroit. Oh, I love how that was answered in 0 0.1 seconds. <laughs> yes. Um, or actually, no, there's a few. No, <laughs> the other one would have to be probably um, Cassandra Staples, Cassie Staples. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. She's always um, making um, food for um, everyone. Oh, she rides. She rides. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh, yeah. Food. Um, her protein balls, especially. <laughs> Um, her little, um, what else does she make? Little oh, glasses and all, all kinds of things she's bringing in. Uh, so, yeah, I definitely need to up my game in the, um, yes. yeah. Hey, you just need to be on time for us. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to be there. That's a bit of a stab, now, but <laughs> look, I'm trying, all right? <laughs> oh, it sounds like someone I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool oh, shots for sales great um last question Can I something interesting or facts about some of your teammates that no one knows so it could be a hidden talent it could be something they've achieved um over the past few years anything that kind of stands out with some of your teammates uh, what, what else? I see what you two are up to <laughs> <laughs> Kind of FBI investigation. <laughs> yeah, like what else? Who's the Showing this live to everyone. <laughs> I want to know more. You know, we'll we'll look out and be like, "Yep, yeah, I think we got yeah. it, sis." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, random. <laughs> <laughs> some random facts about. Okay. All right. 
maybe about Shani Williams. So she's a mechanic also by oh. trade um, outside oh. of rugby. And she's also um, like one of the most, how can I say, um, spiritually intelligent and like just oh. kind-hearted hearted people I know. Like she's very, um, she's, I love her connection to her spirituality mm. and just how, um, what's the word, connected she is with herself. Yeah. You know, she's she's someone that um, definitely likes to spend a lot of time on her own and to herself. Mm. Um, and that's something, like, I I try to work on that I'm, I'm not good at. Like, <laughs> Neither. You, know, you can hear my laugh the other side of Australia. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, something that I, I want to get better at, you know. Just, cool. um, so anything else about someone else, yeah? Um... Hmm. Um, Cassie's single. She's uh, currently looking for a partner. So anyone watching that's looking for a bitch. We'll put her hand up. Yeah, we'll put her hand up on that. But we got you, Cassie. <laughs> Look, she, yeah, a few, yeah, she's, she, she bakes, guys. She does a lot of baking. Come on, you need food. She's going to kill me if you actually put this on. So. <laughs> Angel, do you want to show us Angel? Yeah, show us Angel. She's probably like, put me on there. Oh, look at her. Look she, at her three stripe life, baby. <laughs> yeah, she, um, she's beautiful. Just how she goes about life, you know. <laughs> against the world. Best friends for life. That's right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, thanks. Right. thanks. So, thanks so, good. Um, to everyone watching, hope you enjoyed. Um, that was Alia Green from the Australia Women's Sevens team. She's a beast on the field, but she's also very talented. We hear off the field too. DJ so. Storm. <laughs> DJ Storm. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Make sure you find me on Spotify one day. <laughs> <laughs>